Hey everyone, welcome back to FedBiz Exchange. I'm Michelle Brown, your coach and your mentor. And today I want to talk to you about your small business contracting profile. Yes, you have a profile where contracting officers come looking for you for a specific item or service. But the question is, are you the one? Does your profile look like you're ready to sell something to the federal government? So this is where contracting officers come to find you. When they're looking for small businesses, they come to a website sponsored by the SBA, Small Business Administration, to find you. Even though you're set up in SAM, sometimes they need to look at your profile to see what you offer. They can find you in different ways. So this is what they call the Small Business dynamic Search, DSBS. They know how to find this. This is where they come to do their market research. Even though they don't do it as often as they should, it's part of their jobs and they're supposed to do this on a regular basis. The reason they put out sources sought is because maybe they can't find you in here or they're not finding exactly what they need. So this is how it works. So you come to this website and you're going to see the top up here where they can choose a quick market search or they can choose the DS bs search which is the page we're on now this is the best page for them to find what they're looking for here are the state locations meaning if i'm located in the state of florida and they're looking for a company specifically like mine or they're looking for me in particular they could come to florida and check on florida and then go down here and check some other boxes but most of the time when they come to this site most of the time they're looking for groups of small businesses so here are the government certification requirements does it need to be woman owned does it need to be 8a certified does it need to be a hub zone economically disadvantaged woman whatever they're looking for a lot of times they may not put in that information they may just put in a state where they want you to be if any or they don't have to put in a state they can just click any state and then the way they look for you mostly is this way they might check a minority box here you can find the minority groups even the certified groups for women and minorities for uh, disadvantaged service disabled veterans they might check one of those box if they want boxes if they want to be even more specific but most importantly you know what they're going to do to do a quick search and to get a group of businesses that fit what they're looking for they're going to put in a NACE code so let's say they have a specific NACE code remember NACE code is higher level so they do realize they could get some other types of businesses that may not fit PSC codes are not on here PSC codes are in your SAM but they're not on here okay so we put in 324110. That's one of the codes that the contracting officer is using to look for some businesses that they need to um, make sure that they're reaching when they put out a contract or a solicitation, I should say, for a contract. When they do the sources sought, like I said earlier, it means they can't find you. So they might try this way first and the sources sought second because they wanna decide should they set aside an opportunity. So here's what they do. They put in the NACE code, or they could also put in a keyword. They could put in gloves, clothing, medical, uh, technology, whatever they wanna put in. Sometimes they just put in a keyword. You shouldn't try to do them all at once, okay? Then they can put in whether or not it's a manufacturer that they're looking for. They can put in if it's a construction company that has a certain amount of bonding, whatever they want to put in these few areas. They can put in certain types of capabilities, like what if they want you to be able to accept credit cards? What if they want you to have a GSA schedule? This is how they look up small businesses that they need to work with. And when they put in the NACE code or any other information, 
they're going to get a profile of a business. They can even search you by your cage code. Let's say they know who you are. Like I mentioned, what if I'm in Florida? They know my cage code. They put in my cage code, they're going to get a whole entire profile on me. Okay, so let's see what happens. They can even put in dates. I want this company to be certified in SAM before or after. I want this company's status in SAM to be active. This whole setup right here comes through your SAM. If you want to update this, once you see what I'm about to show you, you need to go through SAM. You have to go through the entire SAM process, and then it will ask you, do you want to update your small business profile? You would say yes, and it would allow you into another space where I'm going to take you. But after the contracting officer puts in the information that they want to use, they click the search button right here, and then they get a profile that looks like this. They get a profile that looks like this. This search for 324110, the NACE code, and under any state comes, with, comes up with approximately 500 business profiles. Okay, and here are the profiles. Here's what they look like. And he or she, the contracting officer, may decide that that's too much and that or that's too many 500 so they may go back and narrow it down but what i'm going to do is i'm going to choose a profile here because i want you to see what it looks like i have some things to talk to you about your profile should look a certain way when they come to look for you if they don't see what they need or what they're looking for then they go out to sources sots they become uh, not frustrated but they begin to realize maybe there are not enough businesses or too many businesses with general information under that code i need to narrow this down so when they come looking for you let's say he goes back to narrow it down he or she they need to see very specific things maybe they do want you to be an a day Maybe they do want to make sure that when they look at your profile, they can tell exactly what you do. So under the code 324110, sure, this company has that in their profile, but there's some areas that we're going to see this company did not fill out. This part right here, your identification, location, and contacts, that's going to generate from SAM automatically. That's your general information. Your legal structure is going to generate automatically. Your uh, certifications, any other certifications, 8A, all of that will generate automatically. This person is not 8A, they're not hub zone, they're not a joint venture, they're not woman owned, none of these. They're not even considered uh, economically disadvantaged as, of course, they're not woman owned. So they're, let's see, are they economically disadvantaged up here? No. Okay, so all of those are no, those are automatics. These other areas are where you need to focus. If this company has other certifications, it looks like they tried to type something in here, but you need to put your non-federal certifications in here. It matters. The more qualified you look to a contracting officer, a federal buyer, the faster he or she will reach out to you, okay? Uh, capabilities statement or narrative you need to have a good description of what you do i'm going to tell you why when we get a little bit further down to the bottom even if this person has that code the nace code i was looking for this is not a very good profile i still don't know what this person does so i'm just going to bypass them then i'm going to go to the next profile that i saw if i don't see anything there i might go to another one but this is not good. There should be a, a capabilities narrative in here. It should look very much like what's on your capability statement. If you use any special equipment, it should be on here. Business type percentages. That means how much of your business, for instance, is commercial uh, construction. Uh, maybe it's 50%. The other 50% is residential. That's what they mean by business type percentages. So if you have three different lines of work that you do, you can put the percentages in here. It gives them a little bit 
better understanding of what you do and how much experience you have in different areas. Down here, bonding levels. Maybe you don't have any bonding, so that's not a big deal. If you're construction or other types of companies that require bonding, that would be appropriate for you to put that information in here because then it tells them you're ready. What if they want you to do a job for a half a million dollars and you have a million dollars in bonding? That should be filled in if bonding is required. NACE codes. Look at this. There are a lot of NACE codes in here. And yes, they're all small business. But look at this one. Yes, this is their primary, that 324. Actually, let me see. Their primary is not even the one that I pulled up, the 324110, Petroleum Refineries. And that's okay. That's not a big deal. But look at all these different NACE codes in here. I'm confused now. I don't know what this company really does. So I'm not going to choose them because I'm not sure that they even closely meet the, the standards or the capabilities of what I need or what I'm looking for. This is going to tell me I'm confused. Now, if they had the capabilities narrative in here, I might consider it if that narrative matched what I was looking for. Come on down a little bit further. You see all of the NACE codes, okay? All of these are small business NACE codes, but look at all these different activities they do. That's not bad if you can demonstrate why you have all of these codes in here. When a contracting officer comes looking for you, they're looking for specific things. If your primary code is here, where is their primary? Here, the chemical product and preparation manufacturing, there should be a description at minimum under capabilities narrative at minimum then we come down a little bit further keywords well where could that come from he he does have keywords in here but do they match do they match his primary uh, his primary nace code do they match his capability narrative up top now where could you get the best keywords you get those from your product service codes not necessarily just from your NACE codes. You can use your NACE codes too, but your product service codes will help you identify the best keywords to put in here. So you can fill in this information, okay? So when you go back to your SAM next time, or if you want to, if you feel that you're missing out on opportunities, come back here and clean this up. I have a couple more. Miscellaneous, that's not as important, but what if you have something that you want to put under quality assurance? You can put something there or electronic data interchange capable. Most of you should say yes. You should be able to accept data in today's environment, you know, electronically. So you should say yes. Exporter, uh, they didn't answer this question one way or the other. This is do you want to be an exporter or do you not or are you? You need to answer those, okay? Performance history. This is very important. You should put your commercial performance history in here. It will allow you to put your performance, like contracts that you've had. Since this person did not fill in any of that information, it's not going to show you, but it will allow you to put in the contract type, whether it's commercial or federal. Hey guys, I know government contracting can be a little challenging, but don't forget, you have Ask Michelle B. Ask me your government contracting questions anytime, anything you want to know.